In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his last and beloved Mr. Muhammad, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. The title of this presentation is The Sign in Beehives. So in this presentation, brothers and sisters, I will show the practical applications from the great sign that Allah, God Almighty, placed in the creation of bees and beehives. And from these applications, I will talk about how to design and build houses that have the following characteristics, that they are strong, stiff, balanced, low cost. Also, how to design the best thermal insulation and soundproofing from the sign in the beehives, and also how to design wireless networks. And all of these applications are from the great sign that Allah God Almighty placed in beehives. So this great sign in bees, we learn from the Quran, from the last revelation of Allah God to people. In chapter 16, verse 68, which reads, this is in the translation, and your Lord inspired the bees saying, take your habitations in the mountains and in the trees and in what they erect. So if we ponder upon this Quranic verse, we see that Allah God Almighty urges, uh, urges us to ponder and reflect upon the bees habitation or the beehives. And if we do that, as you can see on the screen, we see on the right a beehive and you can see that it's clinging to a tree. And if we think about this, if we ponder upon it, we see that we have hundreds of bees buzzing and uh, flapping their wings around the beehive. And yet, the, this, the hive remains stable, strong, balanced, and doesn't crack or fracture. So we can conclude that this um, hive, the way Allah inspired the bees to build their uh, habitation or their hive, that it's, this design is strong, stiff, balanced, and low weight. So the logic goes that if we ponder upon this design, how Allah created the beehive, we can learn engineering concepts that we can utilize in building our homes and houses. Again, if we study the beehives and the significance of the, the way Allah God Almighty created this uh, uh, hive, we can learn engineering designs that we can implement in our homes to make them stronger, stiffer, balanced, and low cost and low weight. And if we ponder upon another thing, that we see that the vibration produced from the hundreds of bees around the hive, it produces so much vibrational energy. And yet, the hive remains stable. So this means that the design of the beehive also, it's earthquake resistant. It can withstand so much vibrations. Now, the way I will proceed here, is that the main characteristic of a beehive is the hexagonal arrangement of the hive, the hexagonal arrangement of the wax walls of the hive. So if we compare the way Allah created the beehive and the way we build our homes, we see that the way we build our uh, houses, there is a kind of a main um, theme to that, which is that the angle between the walls in our rooms, it's always 90 degrees. In our houses, our homes, the angle between the walls is 90 degrees. But if we look at how Allah inspired the bees to build their hive, we see that the angle between the wax walls is not 90 degrees, it's 120. So let's see, what's this, what's this difference in the angle between 90 and 100 degrees would make to the stability and strength of the house. So I made computer models, as you can see on the screen. The one on the right 
is a suggested room design from the Quran that we should make our walls having an angle of 120 degrees between them, a hexagonal room, instead of the current design, as you can see on the left, which is basically like a square or rectangle, 90 degrees angle between the walls. So what I did is that I applied a force in the computer on both models to test their stability and strength. And the computer um, gives certain parameters that we can use to ascertain the uh, strength and stability of the uh, design. So this is one of the results, as you can see on the screen. Here we have on the right the displacement values for the hexagonal design, the suggested design from the Quran. And on the left, we have the displacement results for our um, current designs. And both uh, structures were, uh, and the same force were applied to both structures. As you can see, there's a huge difference in the displacement values between the two designs, such that the hexagonal design yields a very, a very smaller displacements compared to the one on the left. And this, this smaller displacement means that the hexagonal uh, design is much stronger than the one that we use today, the rectangle or the square. So this kind of um, conclusion, what are the practical applications from it? Now, we have in the hexagonal design a very strong design. So this means that if we build our homes, our houses, based on the hexagonal design, meaning we have a hexagonal rooms, we can use half or one third of the construction material and still have a strong, stable, and much better home. So this will yield a very kind of a large reduction in construction cost because you use half or one third of the material because the, the, the hexagonal design is much stronger. So you don't need that much construction material to achieve higher strength in the design. Also, the hexagonal design is much more earthquake resistant. It can resist large displacements, large forces, vibrational energies produced from earthquakes, from hurricanes, and, and such forth. Um, so this is one practical application from the great sign that Allah placed in the beehive. Okay, another application, if we ponder upon another um, knowledge that Allah inspired the bees to do, we see that the larva, the bee's larva, it's incubated in the hexagonal rooms in the beehive. So these hexagonal cells, they're not used only for to store honey, but also to incubate the bee's larva. And to think, think about this, now this small kind of the um, this larva, they need to be shielded from large vibrations and noise and sounds. So this necessitates that this, this hexagonal design should be should have soundproofing, should shield sound. So this is another kind of advantage of the hexagonal design that is it's excellent in soundproofing or shielding sound. Another thing we can learn here that the larva needs also a stable temperature. So if we have large variations in temperatures, this will harm the, uh, the growth and development of the bee's larva. So this again necessitates that this, this hexagonal design should be an excellent thermal insulator. So this all we learn from the uh, beehive and the, how Allah inspired the bees to build the hive. So we conclude from this, or we can deduce from this, that if we build um, insulation material using hexagonal cells, for example, using uh, foam in a hexagonal pattern or aluminum in a hexagonal pattern, this will produce excellent soundproofing and thermal insulation. And no wonder that people, after years of trial and error and research, they found that the best panels used for soundproofing and heat insulation is the panels you can see on the screen. And as you can see, they are based on the hexagonal cells, exactly like the one found in bees. So we see that this knowledge Allah teaches us from the Qur'an in a matter of minutes. But because the majority of Muslims, they deserted the Qur'an, they abandoned Allah God Almighty and His book, 
they find themselves on the receiving end of uh, things. Okay, another application from the um, from Pandurang from the Beehive is in communication engineering and in the design of wireless networks. So, in a wireless network, for example, let's say mobile networks, we have something called mobile transmission towers. As you can see on the screen, we have these towers that need to transmit and receive electromagnetic radiation. And they are used, uh, they are spread in a certain arrangement to make a, a wireless network. Now, there is a, a main requirement or, the, or a goal that, that engineers want to achieve that we need to um, cover the maximum area with minimum amount of towers to reduce the cost and the power requirements for these towers. And there's a big question, what is the best arrangement for these towers to produce maximum coverage with minimum amount of towers? And of course, achieving an excellent signal strength. Now, the answer for this question we can find in one verse in the Quran, which is verse number 69 of chapter 16 of the Quran, which reads, then eat of all fruits and follow the ways of your Lord made easy. There comes forth from their bellies a drink of varying color, wherein is healing for men. Verily, in this is indeed a sign for people who think. So we see that the key to answering the question of what's the best arrangement for mobile transmission towers can be found in the statement that Allah made the ways of the bees easy. So, what, is, what, what can we learn from this? Now, if we compare the size of the bee to the size of the hive, we see the large difference between the two, meaning that the size of the bee is very small compared to the size of the hive. Now, the only way that the building of this hive is easy for the bee is if the hive, this hexagonal design, should cover maximum area with minimum amount of building material. So the bee should, should use the minimum amount of wax to, cover, to build the hive and to cover the maximum area. So this, we can conclude from this, that the hexagonal design is the best design to cover maximum area with the minimum amount of material. So if we go back to the, the, the transmission towers, as you can see on the screen, we need to place the towers in hexagonal cells like that in beehives. If we do that, we can achieve maximum coverage with minimum amount of mobile transmission towers. So this is the answer from the Quran in, in, in a matter of minutes. And again, no wonder that people and researchers, after years of trial and error, they found that placing the towers in a hexagonal cells, as you can see on the screen, this is the best way to do that. So you see, brothers and sisters, that Allah God Almighty from two verses, of pondering upon two verses of the Quran, we learn this much knowledge. So how about if Muslims, Muslims, they ponder upon the more than 6,000 verses of the Qur'an. Imagine what state the Muslims would be in, what knowledge they would gain if they ponder upon the more than 6,000 verses of the Qur'an. And if you want to know more details about this topic, please visit my website at www. Quran-miracle.com and you can email me at zquran at gmail.com and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all.